I'm back. Here's part two, EZIO intraosseous demonstration. The other size needles that we have, and it says right on the box, it tells you by weight. So this is actually a pediatric needle, and I'll open the package, we'll take a look at it. And this is for 40 kilograms or over, the adult needle. And that humerus needle is obviously for <clears throat> an adult as well. So again, when I open the needle package, it comes with the handy dandy armband. It comes with the extension tubing, which I'll flush first. And it comes with a needle that's sterile in a package. What's also really neat about the um, intra-os access, you can draw blood out of the intra-os and send it to the lab for testing. The white can will be off because it is coming from the marrow. So my job as a nurse right now is actually to make sure this is as clean or I should say sterile procedure as possible. We want to reduce any risk of infection to the patient. So whatever is recommended in your institution, whether it's alcohol or chlorhexidine scrub to the site would be perfect. They say um, accessing the marrow takes about two minutes. Accessing a central line like a femoral I think it's minimum 12 to 15 minutes, plus there's a lot of risks involved. <clears throat> so in, excuse me, in an emergency situation, this is a wonderful device, and you'll see exactly what I mean. So this is a pediatric needle, and you can see it comes sterile with a cover, and it is very small. So we're going to use the adult needle today, and the pediatric needle is actually for 3 to 39 kilogram patients. So it's a good guideline right there on the box. For 40 kilograms and over, same equipment that's in the box, but my needle's going to be longer. So I open the container. It's like a little magnet ready for me. I've made sure that um, myself or the team has cleaned the bone. Nice bone, right? And I'm going to take the cover off the needle. And perhaps you could see the two lines on the needle. The rule with the, need with the, the lines on the needle is that you're supposed to um, feel the flat surface of the bone, keep it as clean as possible, and the rule is to push the needle in and hit the bone. And if I see a black line left on the needle, I know I still have enough needle length to get into the marrow once I drill. Now certainly the patient's bone and leg would be on a table or stretcher, but just for demonstration purposes, you'll see that I don't really need to put a lot of pressure on the drill, and they don't recommend a lot of pressure because you put some drain on the battery. So it's going straight in to the bone with um, a consistent pressure, a light pressure, until the needle is into the marrow and you feel a release. So here we go. Okay, it's in. So what I'm going to do now is grab the needle, pull the drill right off, put the drill down. I'm still holding on to the bottom of the needle. So when I unscrew the top, the inner cannula comes right out, right into my shops container that goes, or I could stick it into one of these little orange caps until I can get to a shops container. I have my um, access ready. I have my connection tubing, which is flushed. You could put a syringe right to the access, but this will help me maintain the line. And I could put a syringe or hang up an IV drip. I could push any drug in here. I could allow fluid to flow. 
I can give blood transfusion or blood products through the IO. They do recommend that you put it on a pressure bag or a pump to allow for continuous infusion at a regulated rate and it'll stay in for 24 hours. I have seen in the emergency department it infusing right from an IV bag without even pressure. So that's very neat. So this stays in for 24 hours until another IV access can be um, attained. And I've also seen or heard of stories that they will access more than one bone. They'll put more than one needle in. Some medications are not compatible. For example, TPA for cardiac um, patients. So this is a lovely device. <clears throat> and I'll follow the directions that came in the package. And remember, I could infuse drugs blood and fluid. And I highly recommend you going to their website. It's the Easy IO website. Vitacure is another name. And go to YouTube and I think typing in intraosseous demonstration gets you to a load of videos on real patients. Actually they might be volunteer patients, but it's there. And and I've also seen actually a pediatric patient on that video. So hopefully it was a real patient. So they gave me um, pediatric bones to drill into, adult uh, tibias and femurs and humerus. So we get to practice quite a bit. So whether you're taking a pediatric advanced life support program or taking an advanced life support program, you'll definitely be reading about the IO intraosseous drill and if you're coming to one of my programs you might even get to practice with the drill. Certainly not on me but on a bone. So I hope that's helped you understand how the intraosseous needles work and how they're used. If you have any questions you can contact me through my website michellekunz.com and that's m-i-c-h-e-l-e k-u-n-z Dot com. Uh, send me an email, send me comments, send me some of the experience you've had with the drill. I just think it's so amazing. And if you go to, as a nurse, if you go to AACN, the American Association of Critical Care Nurses, there's a statement there that says that critical care nurses should be deemed competent in doing this procedure. I can't wait. So thank you for your attention, and please be sure to watch some of my other videos. Bye for now.